Hello there, lovely soul, and welcome to the Evolved Now podcast with Infinity. This is the podcast. It's um, podcast number 133. I've been seeing a lot of threes lately. Well, yesterday was the 23rd, but even before that. Anyway, today is the full moon. It's a super full moon. It is in a very intense set of energies attached to this full moon and a lot of it is about illuminating us in a really intense way to to feel to see to envision to understand however your perception is picking up on it that there's things that need to be cleared out or changed or rearranged or or opened back up and examined um and that's usually the darker stuff so another term for all of that would be shadow work i have a client who um told me that she's being she really feels this like pull to do shadow work and I realized I'm like I never really use that term but a lot of what we do is shadow work just of of the stuff that I talk about the stuff that I write about the the type of meditations that I channel and the way that I'm guided to heal people it's it's about um, it's about clearing up negative energies and recalibrating the body and doing all of that. And we'll go through waves of time where we will definitely be pushed to, um, I guess, revisit or come to terms with, however you want to put it, with uh, things that have yet to be healed within us and also um, to understand our, our different sides, our different aspects and to understand that we had, that's another reason why like the divine feminine, divine masculine comes into play so much. There's a balancing that needs to take place and um, the solar plexus is our energy center where um, that's like our, the center of our own solar system. And we will feel in our abdomen, in our solar plexus chakra and our hips and our in that entire area um our digestive system so it, it can come through in different ways but you'll feel this like unsettling kind of something is is off or not normal or something like that uh so anyway this full moon attached to the solstice attached to the new moon that was a lunar eclipse is all really intense energies for this month of june and i know for myself and many others it was a very different sort of month <laughs> a very different sort of month and even leading up to it uh was was different so i mean things kind of started to pick up momentum in May but then June saw that like the wave finally breaking and things then being sent in different directions than they normally are and and your energy shifting and changing so there's definitely that going on this entire month and then not to forget the uh the stargate as well so between the 6th and the 16th and and in that entire period it's very much like the 
the energies coming through is to help sort out densities and find the best timelines for you to um, be pushed enough to evolve but not shake things up so much that um, you know you may backslide sort of thing and that's if you're you know paying attention to how these things work for people who are kind of oblivious to that they can really get caught up in the riptide of energies coming through and be more of a victim to their energy and what they're feeling than it being something that they use as a tool and they understand um so that's why i talk about stargates quite often because they are really important and they happen every single month and they get progressively more intense throughout the year as we move towards the end of the year and stargates are are functional in a kind of a different way towards the end of the year than they are in the beginning of the year i'm not going to get deep into that here if you are called to learn more about stargates and i hope that you are you could check out my video about them on my youtube channel um i don't think yeah i did not convert that to a podcast so you if you're just a podcast listener and you're not in if you don't do youtube you may want to make an exception and head over to youtube and just do a search on my channel for stargates and it will come up uh, i think i did that in may april or may okay so anyhow getting into this full moon is definitely about uh helping us to sort out our you know the, the the triggers the feelings the events the energies the people the all the different things that um that are more Or that give us, I'm trying to say this so I, I don't leave a, a, the wrong impression, but they, they give us any kind of um, like, I guess it would be a, like a, a lower vibrational type of feeling. Um, and old memory memories can come up uh just being kind of bothered in certain ways triggered by all sorts of things um and all those are an indication that there's you know energy that's not entirely in alignment and and so it's important to see it, feel it, understand it, but not necessarily judge it. And and this is all this can also be just the process of feeling really heavy being really tired um and I would I was writing an email earlier to one of my clients and I was saying you know I just feel like I'm being rewired and that's not a bad thing it's just sh there's definitely shifting going on and I'm just kind of allowing for the work that work to take place and then for me to do whatever I'm being guided to do alongside of it or whatever without 
you know, really questioning too much <laughs> about it. Just kind of noticing like how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what I'm being guided to do um, or not do, you know, to think about what I, how I'm feeling energetically, what my reactions are and just kind of witnessing myself without any kind of, you know, um, like forceful type of trying really hard um, to be this way or that way, you know, because then that's like, like you really, you really don't want to fool try to fool yourself or your body or your energy because then you know that that will that will spill out in different ways so then that would just confuse you and your bodies because it's like you're not you're not letting it just be <laughs> so you know if you were to react in a certain way and then you're like oh I'm really flying off the handle here or I got really negative or I'm talking down to myself or I lashed out or whatever the case may be and then see it and then stop it you know I'm not saying just let yourself go unchecked but what I'm saying is don't try to rein yourself in from, you know, without letting yourself feel what it's meant to feel and be what it is. So you can really see it, <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of times as you do that and as time goes on in a more conscious way, you'll go, wow, I really didn't like have the energetic reaction or the trigger that I would normally have when this hat when that happens like what's different like you know just whatever you can notice about yourself that's that's growth energetically is a good thing uh so anyhow the full moon is really turning up the the light in the environment within you and in your in your inner environment and outer environment to illuminate what needs to be revealed and whatever that is it just needs to be seen and and acknowledged um, and sometimes it just takes some time to kind of look back and go, oh yeah, wow, huh, interesting. That's, has been this or that, or that did change from this to that, or I was more this and now I'm that or <laughs> whatever, just to see to, and sometimes you can see that kind of coming and sometimes you can't, it just kind of like, oh, I haven't thought about that or. I didn't see it that way. I didn't understand that part of it or I didn't know that bit of information about it. Um, whatever, you know, that that makes things shift within you. So anyhow, we have A situation here where I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six decks out in front of me. Well, actually, five are Oracle. Oh, oh interesting. Five are Oracle decks, and the sixth deck is. Oh, that's not what that is. I take it back. Okay, never mind. I thought it was my the archangel portion of the 
Is that what this is? Okay, that's what this is. <laughs> that was weird. Um, okay, so I have the Archangel portion of my Angel Tarot, which I thought it was this other pile, but that was just a portion of the whole. Weird. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, it was, it's like the, the same size, so that's strange. Um, or amount of cards, I should say. This other little pile I had out that I thought was this. So anyway, this is what I, I was guided to get out, so good thing I saw it. So anyway, this is the Major Arcana, which is the Archangel portion of the Angel Tarot by Dorian Virtue. I have the Moonology Oracle, the Archangel Oracle, the Mermaid Oracle, the Hidden Worlds Oracle, and my Sacred Geometry Oracle. Now, I'm going to use my pendulum to go over each deck to see which ones we're going to get cards from. These are just the ones that I was really feeling to pull out, but that doesn't mean we're going to get into that, all these decks. So I'm just going to use my pendulum here. So, so I'm over the sacred geometry one. Oh, and I'm getting a no here. Oh, okay. All right. So no on that. Let's go over hidden worlds. Uh, Looks like no on that as well. Okay. Then let's go over the Mermaid Oracle. Got a yes on that. And a yawn. So already, and I do this yawn thing when I start to pick up on energy and those on the other side or in other places dimensions okay so i'm going to go over the archangel oracle and i'm getting a yes on that and then the moonology oracle and I'm getting a yes on that. And then the Archangel Tarot Major Arcana. Let's see. And I'm getting a yes on that. Okay. So I'm going to start here with the uh, Moonology Oracle. Is we're gonna get at least four cards here, probably more with the archangels. But I was I was definitely feeling that energy. And I just wasn't sure about these other ones, but I'm not surprised about this arc the archangels coming up, and then it is the full moon, so using the the moonology cards just makes sense whenever I'm working with any kind of moon and moon day whatever kind of moon day it happens to be okay so here we go gonna get a moonology card here we go moonology card your commitment is being tested first quarter moon coming out so that's like that 50 that's like the 50 50 moon half light half dark your commitment is being tested i'm gonna get more here clearly emotions are running high and both of these cards have a really purple feel to them and i will be taking pictures of this and putting it on my instagram and my blog on my website so by the time this comes out those pictures and that will be up so you can go to my instagram or my blog to see these pictures um Okay, and I'm hearing one more 
for the moonology. And a new start is coming with the new moon energy. New moon, a new start is coming. Another very purple, a lot of pinks and purples, a little bit of blues in this card. But all of these are very purple as they sit next to one of my amethysts. Okay, so your commitment is being tested. Emotions are running high. And a new start is coming. Interesting. Okay, so your commitment is being tested. Let's go there here real, real quick. Um, this could also be like f your faith is being tested. Um, your stamina is being tested. Your energy is being tested. I think it can kind of be like fill in the blank that's being tested. Your your ability to, you know, perceive or receive or communicate. I think that in a lot of ways we're being tested and in, in you know. And so but when it comes to commitment I really see that more for the self and it's like what are you how are you willing to stretch yourself into uncomfortable places for, you know, the greater good, the, what needs to happen, what you're being asked and called to do kind of thing. Um, like your resolve, your willingness to, uh, be uncomfortable and it's easy to, and it's understandable to not want to be uncomfortable, but that's how we grow. That's how we evolve. That's how we, we move into our destinies is by going into places we've never been before. I mean, that's what life is all about. So you may as well do it in a conscious way to eventually, like as time goes on, evolving into like the ultimate version of yourself that like, if, if you can aim towards the highest possible set of timelines that is, you know, there's infinite possibilities for our path, but we definitely have levels and, and layers to where we could, can be at any given time. <laughs> And, but there's always those like checks and balances to make sure that we're actually, we belong, <laughs> we belong there. So we're always being tested to some degree. And it's really, so we have emotions are running high with the, oh, there's the, I didn't even notice. The emotions are running high with the super moon. So we did get our card for today. It is a super moon day. Um, and emotions are running high. This is definitely true. So something to be aware of is that we're, you know, greater sensitivity in different regards. And I think it's really interesting. We, we have the super moon, the new moon, and the first quarter moon. This is really interesting here. This, this, these cards that came out and that's just like landing on me now. I was really more into, like, I wasn't really noticing that um, or putting it all together until it was like, oh, look at this. So we have these really um, interesting, 
intensely energetic energies that are with the super moon and the and the new moon here a new start is coming and emotions are running high these are both like all of this is tying in together for like i said earlier with the with the month of of june being what it was with the lunar eclipse new moon and then we had the um the solstice and then here the super moon and this is the last like super moon of the year so and it's coming here at the end of at the end of june really propelling us forward into really where we need to be um, for the rest of the year and going into 22 so <laughs> I'm just like really not surprised <clears throat> not surprised but also kind of amazed at these cards here um, a new start is coming is definitely absolutely the energy, the energy that comes with the solstice, that comes with the new moon and all of it wrapping. It's just like the momentum into this, into like the cannonball of this super moon that we have and emotions are running high. It's like when you're on, when you get on like the biggest roller coaster that you've ever been on and you're like, oh my God, this is going to be wild and crazy and exciting and scary and trippy and and I'm probably going to feel a little sick and freaked out, <laughs> a little scared. And, um, you know, you, you feel just like a ton of energy and a ton of emotions come up. And, and you're like taking in everything at such a high level with your senses. And the more tuned in you are energetically, the more you're going to pick up on on everything that's also outside of you on an energetic level that it feels like the everything is you in, in, in with the roller coaster ride it's a very interesting sensation and that's what i feel here with this full moon so let's get into the archangel oracle okay got three cards here we got first one out was leadership with archangel gabriel it is time for you to assume your leadership power and position and lovingly guide others next one is prioritize with metatron focus on your highest priorities i will help you get organized and motivated and next teaching and learning with Zadkale, keep an open mind and learn new ideas, then teach those ideas to others. So these are these three together are actually really, really so um <laughs> it's like the two arms and the head kind of thing here. Prioritize like having that that drive to speak your truth be authentic share of yourself or you know really start getting into some type of leadership or position of power or teacher role and then with that kill keep an open mind and learn new ideas then teach these ideas to others <clears throat> so that could be as simple as passing on information sharing articles and videos and posts and and not holding back really sharing what you're what's coming in to your world what's in the world that for many people is is has not yet seeped through to their consciousness for them to see things and or to understand it on any kind of soul-based level 
Okay, and then let's get into the Major Arcana, which again is the Archangels. So here we go. And I'm also being told here, like, this is interesting. It's like these cards with Gabriel, Metatron, and Zadkiel kind of coincide with these moon cards. And it's like Gabriel with a with a new moon. No, Gabriel. Gabriel with the full moon. Metatron with the first quarter moon and Sad Kale with the new moon. So leadership with emotions are running high and teaching and learning with the new start is coming and prioritize with your commitment is being tested. That's interesting because they're like pointing. They're like these three go with those three. You just don't have them in the right order. And let's see our first. We got two cards here with the Arcana. We have unity, card number five with sandal fawn. Traditional viewpoints or methods, spiritual organizations, seek out mentors and like-minded friends, unity. And then we have card number 21, the world with Michael. A job well done, joy, contentment, and gratitude, a path towards enlightenment. Wow. So we're really ending a cycle here, I'm hearing. He's showing me like it being like turning into the last few click, 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 clicks before it's like really solidified um, into what's coming next, I see. And again, it's like <clears throat> new beginnings that energy um, and learning being open keep an open mind and learn new ideas so that's like how that's coinciding with that new moon energy um, and it is 11 11 here in the a.m. of the full moon and we are Still at a hundred percent with our new with our full moon. Um, full moon officially at eleven thirty three a.m. So here in just a little bit, we'll still be here together as that goes on, and that's why I started when I did. So here we go. Um, let's see if I see the time at 11 33 i have been for days now that number's been coming up so <laughs> just been a thing um so anyway i'm hearing a whole new world when i'm looking at the world card here i'm hearing a whole new world and there are two infinity symbols here and those are getting my attention um, and it is this like, and that's also connecting with the unity card, um, that we have here with sandal fawn, traditional viewpoints or methods, spiritual or organization, seeking mentors and like-minded friends, um, connecting in to different, you know, in a different way coming being ready and, and more into leaving the safety of your solitude if that's been, you know, kind of your thing. And it's definitely been kind of the theme that was the theme of 2020 for a lot of people that, you know, found themselves kind of 
more in a state of solitude and, and they needed that or if you were already in that state for the most part and your uh even before even before the the pandemic and then of course during the pandemic that only solidified that more for a lot of people me included uh so anyhow this this energy with the world and unity is really reminding me and i'm being shown that energy that came through with the solstice and the solstice meditation that i did so if you have not yet done that one definitely do that one and i would say do that one before you do this one um and then do this one you know, whenever you're guided to uh, as, as close to the full moon as possible. But I would say definitely do that solstice one first to, to as a foundation into this one is what I'm hearing. Okay, now let's get into our mermaid oracle, my newest oracle. And if you follow me, you know, I've done a couple of reads with this so with this oracle deck so far and i did a whole separate one getting really getting into the guidebook for this so if you're a mermaid person like i've been and it's only getting stronger and and i'm feeling that ocean energy so much so intensely and i'm up in the mountains so i'm not near the ocean unfortunately um but i've always been very connected to the ocean so anyhow the mermaid energy and their that whole realm the ocean the water fae, the mers, uh, definitely coming in a lot. And, and also the land and forest fae in the last couple months have been a real kind of interesting coming, coming out and up more um, around these parts anyway. And it's been really fantastic, actually. And the people who are meant to, to also connect deep, more deeply with them as well. Really feeling that with the feedback that I get with my clients, people I work with. So. Oh, here we go. Got two guys. One is in reverse, but it doesn't mean um, we're going to check in on that. One is right side up. So I'm going to pick up the one that's right side up first. Oh, pretty. Card number one. Beauty, grace, loveliness, integrity of form and spirit spirit oh my gosh how pretty and the next one divination card number is that a 13 or a 15 card number 15 <sighs> and yeah this one's also right side up prophecy fate destiny future fortune so we got Beauty and Divination, card number one and card number 15. So let's get right into it with card number one. Beauty. I'm going to read directly from the book. So beauty, message, grace, loveliness, integrity of form and spirit. The mermaid sang beauty, the sensing of something deeply harmonious and pleasing to the eye and to the soul is a form of great divinity. Beauty in some ways is considered to be an artifice, something that can be 
approximated and conjured through makeup, hairstyles, behaviors, and other forms of camouflage and cover. But true deep beauty, such as the kind the mermaids know and see, is the kind that emanates out from a soul that knows itself. Beauty is not an illusion, but an emanation from the soul that shines out. And to wish to be beautiful, to wish to have this said of oneself, is simply the yearning for the soul's perfections to be acknowledged. Humans are also at present very narrow in their definitions of beauty, for there is also beauty in our aged ones, in their white hair and tired eyes. There's beauty in, in asymmetry of injuries, of the irregularities uh, of form that befall so many. If this card has come to you, it is time for you to understand that your own beauty must be acknowledged and tended to, not with the unseeing eyes of a culture that wishes to sell to you the fear that your form is imperfect and make a culture of neurotics who fear being rejected for their lack of youth and shiny hair. This beauty is deeper. It is to shine. It is to enhance and become your own true self. It is to be as healthy and as well as you can be at this moment. It is to speak not only words that may be true, but words which are also kind and graceful, nourishing to the souls of others, supportive of their potential and their own beauty. Beauty cannot be separated from appearance, but the way in which you regard yourself will immediately impact upon those who regard you. If you do not your regard yourself with eyes that can see your own beauty, that beauty may well go unseen by so many others. Even our young and undeniably beauteous ones are often unable to see their own form as lovely. Always we teach them to find fault and then to spend their energy fixing themselves, when all the while there was a far greater task for them. If you have received this card, make every act of self-regard one in which you can see your beauty. Undertake your beauty rituals with intent and great import and care. And awaken the beauty that has longed to shine out from you. The tools we mermaids have been gifted with are also our gifts to you. Our comb represents the precious and sacred nature of caring for your physical selves and acknowledging that your bodies deserve time and reverence. There is a realistic element to all beauty routines that can be lifted out of the mundane and commercial world and into the sacred, making of your bodies an honored temple which you love and respect and demonstrate gratitude for by honoring your body you honor most deeply your soul and the spark of life itself i love this so much and as i read this i was pointed to my uh, meditation that I facilitated back, um, this was actually on Valentine's Day. So it was a gift to us. Um, and it was a beautiful uh, self healing meditation. It was called Body Love and Meeting Your Guardian Angel. So if you have not done that, or if it's been that many months since you did do it, please revisit that uh, meditation. It is a really beautiful, loving, self-caring, um, connecting to your body and really seeing, um, letting go of negativity towards it and about it and and tapping into you know the amazing thing that your body is and also meeting with your guardian angel so that is just an awesome set of energies and to feel so i highly recommend that i believe it's um episode 122 or 123 of my podcast okay and it's also on 
my YouTube channel. So if you go to you, my YouTube channel and search uh, Guardian Angel or Body Love or any combination like that, you it'll pop up. Okay, and the reverse meeting, even though it did not come out reverse, I like to read this anyway. Uh, believing you are not beautiful, finding fault with all that compliment you, refusing to take a compliment, seeing faults in your form and appearance, refusing to care for yourself, what is the point, treating yourself as though you are a rough and sp spoiled thing, not caring for your form and face um, thinking of such things as stupid and seeing vanity where there could be self love criticizing other beings for their form and their appearance rather than focusing on your own and what will make you feel utterly yourself and profoundly beautiful and divination it is time to tell yourself of your beauty it is time to care for your for your beauty to undertake undertake rituals for the skin and the hair and the teeth but ones which enhance your own unique self it is time to use pure natural products it is time to create of your form that which you feel to be a pure expression of your own self for within that self lies the beauty of you. Very nice. Okay, so. So, yeah, kind of what I'm hearing here is just really take the time to take care of yourself in a, in a more like ritualistic sort of way to if you hopefully you have a bathtub if you don't then see about getting yourself a shower chair and um that way you can sit in like underneath the shower the water and not have to stand it's a there's a big difference there um, and just that would be good. You can also take a, a foot tub into the shower with you. So while you're sitting, you can fill it up with water, put your feet in that. Um, it would be great with some salt so you can let your feet soak while you're getting, um, water, you know, over your body. So water it is a really important part of of a beauty routine I feel um and and health routine so so there's that um and I would add to this that if you're a woman and you color your hair to cover up gray um, I hope if you take a look at my pictures, you'll see that I don't color my hair. I did my entire life up until, um, like five or six years ago. And I just understood finally, I mean, I never liked putting any chemicals on my, like those harsh hair color chemicals, like they smell, they're they're just you know but I never they never I never felt like they affected me that much but then I finally did understand that you know they did and especially my hair has always grown really really fast and now it's even more it's even faster than ever and so to color my hair every couple weeks is just a lot even if it's once a month um and our society just imposes this uh, this like really unrealistic and unnatural um view of beauty and especially as we age and it's like you're you can't have that gray hair you can't show any kind of age i started getting gray when i was 23 years old 
Um, some of us just have those genetics and I have a big huge white streak on my right side and um and it's just all, like it's all through my hair but um it's not only good for your health but it's good for your spirit like why cover up that it's our perception that of what beauty is or isn't and that affects us physically and energetically because even like any kind of bleach any kind of dye any kind of chemicals that isn't just natural is not good for you especially putting that on your head on your hair your hair is really energetically potent and is kind of like an extension out of your body for picking up energy, for holding on to history, for all sorts of things. It's also a really good idea sometimes to, to really cut off some length of your hair or go super short for a while. And just let your body, let your head not be constrained by holding it back. And sometimes we just need to, to cut off that energy, you know. So I did that a few years back. And my hair was really short for, for a while until I was guided to let it grow out. And, um, and then I did that. <laughs> but anyhow, when it comes to coloring your hair try to if you do color your hair to cover up gray just think about not <laughs> think about phasing that out think about letting your body just be natural and beautiful the way that it is and that if there's gray or white hairs that is meant to be there and if you ask me people women especially but men too but I think if you see a 60 year old with like dark brown, full head of dark brown hair or, you know, totally bright blonde hair and they're like in their their 50s and 60s and 70s. And it's like, what is happening? That doesn't look normal or natural. It, you know, you're not fooling anybody. You know, we may not know what that, you don't know what that looks like. You don't know what you look like with a full, like just a totally natural head of hair. Like, what does that look like? And um, I got to say from my own personal experience that, um, you know, I don't regret coloring my hair because I had fun with it. Um, but I was also pretty ignorant to how bad that was for me, even though I, I knew it was like, I was, I was, I just didn't care. I was really way more into my, into vanity. And, and even if I saw a little bit of the gray poking out after some growth, it would like, I hated it and it bothered me. And, um, <laughs> I had a real problem with it. And, and then everything shifted and then I'm just like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better, so much happier. My hair is so much healthier. Just not putting any of that, you know, cause you put those chemicals in your hair, then your hair dries out and you have to put other stuff in your hair to compensate for it. And it's just this like, you know, constant thing. So anyway, <laughs> something to consider if you are somebody who colors your hair. Okay. And the next divination card number 15 and the message prophecy fate destiny future fortune the mermaids sing the mermaids surrounded as they are by the mirror of the ocean the living reflection of the past present and future are among the greatest of seers Water, as demonstrated in the experiments by Dr. Emoto, holds and carries the vibrations of all that has gone and can hold all that will be. Water is healing and holds solutions that help us flow to a better place. There is no ending that the water can show us. Uh, only the myriad possibilities water in some places is already holding the vibrational possibilities of the future and we mermaids have been gifted the ability to read these and train 
daughter after daughter in the art of seership, oracling, and ocean oceanomancy. They have kept this truth about their ability silent for many thousands of years as they are already coveted for their beauty, harvested for their sexuality, controlled in so many ways. If so many come to know of their talent for prophecy, who could resist the lure to keep one captive and demand to know their fate or what to do or how to overcome their enemies? Reversed. The signs are reaching for you, falling gently into your mind when you allow it the freedom to wander, when you gaze in the waters of the setting sun, when nature catches your breath and a still voice speaks from you out of the heart of the forest, when you turn off the television and engage with the natural world. But when you take these words and you analyze them, you claim they make no sense. You worry that you are foolhardy and you worry that you cannot interpret them accurately. And so rather than make what you consider to be a mistake, you deny yourself the voice of the ocean, the calling of the deep and your deepest knowing you keep from yourself. Yet this has not stopped you seeking and asking and searching. Stop for a moment. Let the water touch your feet. Close the eyes of the world and still the voice of the mind who knows best. Allow them to come one by one and enter the dream of prophecy. Become the oracle you are. The answers you seek are already within you. Still yourself and let yourself know this, the voice of the mother. <laughs> I love that. Still yourself and let yourself know the voice of the mother. Yeah, so if you know me, if you've been around these parts, you know that I work with Mother Gaia and I channel her in my healings. I work with her pretty much. She's the the center of the of the world here when it comes to any meditations that I facilitate. She's the one that's directing everything. She's the one that I that I work with, um, really aside from the angels, really the closest, um, though she is my, um, greatest guide and, uh, she is who, um, orchestrates what comes in and through me and out to the world. Um, and everybody else is in support of that, including myself. So to know the voice of the mother, and this is, you know, where everywhere you look, this is, you cannot escape what we are and where we are and what we're connected to and what we need to sustain us. And it's all this beautiful, amazing planet, the elements, the animals, the, 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 the nature in every which way and form is all an extension of her, every little bit of it and and tapping into to her and um in the different ways so they're talking here like i i started with the other cards saying you know when it comes to rituals of beauty that water is such a big part of it I i've talked about my baths and how important they are and that's come up several bazillion times and will continue to because it's just such an such a huge part of my world and something that's so important for other people um is the water is being in water going to the bath um and again if you do have the privilege of having a bath if you're fortunate enough to have a bath then make it a place that you are that you take yourself to take care of yourself um and it is a place of of I've called it a portal before you're naked you're alone you um don't use light use can electric light use candlelight um listen to music that helps you connect to the element the the element of water the element of air your own fire within and then mother Gaia can come through as well as your other guides and guardians but um Huh. Well, let me continue here. Okay, divination. 
But to you, the mermaids have come via this card and they say to you that you too have the gift of seeing the possibilities of knowing and feeling out the fate. And they know that as a fellow mer being, one who has been born of the great sea mother, you too can work with the gift of seeing in many directions at once. It is as if you can stare into water and see ripples of what could be. The mermaids are oracles, sibyls of the sea, and you two have the power to connect with the divine. And this power can be activated as you teach yourself the wisdom of the sea. There must be discipline and purpose to your movement. Instruction is coming and they will deliver it through dreams and visions. There will be signs and there will be omens and the symbols will come to you. You will dream and while these dreams may be cryptic or a vision may seem to be unrelated to what is currently taking place. The universe and the ocean of consciousness and possibilities is calling to you to listen and to hear and read the signs. Become aware and hear them whisper on the shoreline of consciousness. Learn to read an oracle like this one. Work with spreads for focus and discipline and conduct readings for friends. You have a gift. It is time to train and then to exercise it with responsibility and guess what beauty <laughs> these two cards go together so well they talk about each other um beauty talks about divination and divination talks about beauty no surprise there um because to truly bring in the um, energies um, when we use divination which is cards the pendulum water fire uh, <laughs> our breath I've been taught to use my own body to to just look at my body as it connects to something so I can see the reaction of it without having the conscience conscious intention of actually reacting we don't need anything else other than ourselves <laughs> is what I'm getting at whether in the different ways that we can use our body our energy our mind just our openness to unite with what is out there that can bring us and channel us to and through us and to let it go about the world at large and the people who say that any of that is not possible or that any of us who talk about it, who believe in it, who teach it, who use it, who make money from it or anything like that that we're that we're bad people or it isn't true or we're con men or um liars don't let the people who are naysayers and negative and close-minded and judgmental who don't understand and and a lot of those people who are like that i've seen are very much psychic themselves but they're terrified of their own abilities of their own experiences and not having a way to connect all the dots in a beautiful little factual logical package for our human monkey brains to understand without seeing and perceiving everything that is beyond that so they say you know, they look at themselves, they look out into the world and anything that it resembles that in any way, shape or form, they say, that's bullshit. That's not real. Um, you know, that's, those are crazy people or again, like any of the other stuff. <clears throat> and there are a lot of people. Um, and I wrote an article about this like two years ago. <laughs> where it was like 
the prejudice that somebody like me, I can only speak from my own experience, but I do know that from other people too, they've experienced this kind of thing where it's like, no, you, you don't have to be known like personally on any kind of level. As long as you say, I am this, I am a healer, I'm a psychic, I'm a medium, I'm a channeler, I'm an astrologer, I'm a numerologist, or any of those things. But especially the more woo ones, like psychic, medium, channeler, healer, um, which I am all of those things. Um, so it makes it, you know, quadruply. And as you go down the list of who and what I am and what I do, it gets really packed thick with a lot of stuff people can point out and say bullshit to. But again, if I allowed people to rule over me, their um, ignorances, their closed-minded ways, and their uh, fear for of themselves and for what is unseen and what they cannot explain then me and a lot of other people would be a lot less aware and a lot less healed and a lot less happy because we went to places that others cannot even see or perceive or understand in any way and all they can do is judge and ridicule and shame and put fear into others as well to stay away from that sort of thing but the very essence of some of us is to be that very thing is to be that incarnate spirit who can perceive past this veil of illusion of illusion that says only what we can touch and see with our eyes is real and anything beyond that is not unless it fits this certain parameter of whatever because any set of people or group of people or religion has their own set of um circumstances for what is or is not okay when it comes to the unseen which I find extremely convenient uh, <laughs> very convenient very 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 convenient so it's like only only the 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 high up religious people or the you know the official religious people are allowed to divine or allowed to channel or allowed to create from that divine you know zero point of connection with spirit or soul and the rest of us are you know liars and witches and horrible people <laughs> for doing the same thing um and not only that but then there's those of us who are actually able to help others heal and that is seen as something really negative and bad and and something to to fear and and those of us who make a living and charge for those services are seen as these really bad people from some perspectives it's like oh you have that gift you should just do it you should just do it and give it away and not charge for it. And, well, I'm just going to say that's complete and utter bullshit. Um, this, if this is what you're called to do as your, as your full-time thing, obviously you need to be compensated for that. And let me tell you, when you give away a miracle, people barely look at it. But when they have to invest in that and take it upon themselves to be a, a, a very intentional participant in their own miraculous healing, it, it makes a, a, a much bigger impact than just, you know, like, oh, I'm going to do this for the price of a manicure. It doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. And nobody is going to value that. People need to understand the value of things through, through time, energy, effort, and their finances. And I need to be compensated for my time, energy, effort, and my 
my contribution ener energetically and what I bring to the table and my connections that you cannot get anywhere else. And that's the way it's meant to be. And anybody shaming me for that um, really doesn't get anywhere with me. <laughs> because and, and I don't get a lot of that but there I have gotten that before that it's like you know that's not something I should do is I should be ashamed of myself for charging and I'm like my response is I could charge a whole heck of a lot more than what I do actually so you know <laughs> you you don't have to like it it's what I'm meant to do and the proof is in the pudding of what the results are and that people can see the value in it and act, and again when they really break it down can say huh if you compare this to a lot of other things it's not that expensive at all and I always just you know follow my guidance when it comes to any and all of that um that stuff but basically what I'm getting at here is there's always going to be people who are going to look down at you if you're not living in the center of what's okay um, societally and what is seen as, as, you know, things that are in that whole realm, that whole woo-woo, holistic, witchy <laughs> realm that people don't understand and that unfortunately that I see a lot of people stay away from their from their calling from who they are from what they need to do and pursue because they're afraid of what others will think of them they're afraid of their own abilities their own god-given um gifts to to do so many different things that that come from being connected to the other side and so it's just really sad to me that those that that happens and I just want to say that when you walk in faith with what you know you should the 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 forward movement of what you feel you need to do or be a part of or connect to or people to work with and things to learn like the divination card is like saying like it's time to lean in to those abilities that that understanding the the um Like, don't try to hide away from being one of the people that knows more than others, that feels more than others, that connects to more than others, that has to live in a certain way because of those things. You know, it's like I, I am very connected to, to nature, very connected to, to, you know, certain, you know, just energy and, and, um, Oh, there goes a spider. It's very good luck to see a spider right now. It's my second spider today, aside from my usual ones. Uh, there's an omen. There's a great omen right there. Spiders are all about searching and pushing themselves and reinventing their 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 whole environment deconstruction and reconstruction and the web of life and how we're all connected it's just beautiful energy um another thing that's like looked at and pro programmed into us in different ways for us to be afraid of that spider energy but spider energy is so it is like i'm being pointed to like that new beginnings card the new moon card that a new start is coming that is so that is such spider energy and especially if you see a spider on the move that means that they're they're evolving, they're changing, they're growing, they're finding a new home. Um, whether it was their decision or not, they're that's where they're you know they're going to a new start. The spider that I'm looking at right now, he's in search of a new home, and um, and we're all like 
even if we're not moving physically, we're always moving energetically and search for just to fit in better in our own skin and know where we're going. And, and I love that saying like, I'm like, I don't have to search for home because I'm already there. I'm always already there because home is my soul. This body is the seed of my soul. And I'm always at home in my body, in my energy. And the more you feel comfortable at home, it's not to say that everything is always going to be comfortable, but just to say that, that you strive to be more comfortable. Like this card talked about beauty. See the beauty in yourself. See the loveliness that is your your home, your vessel, your body. Connect to it in a way that that allows you to love it and not be ashamed of it in any way, shape, or form. And just to strive to treat it better to have the resources to take care of things that need to be taken care of if you have those things to be real about your about the situation whatever it is you know if you need to change your diet you know if you need to to change your sleep pattern or or to take that seriously you know if you need to meditate more you know if you need to to go out in nature more i mean you know these things it's just we get into a pattern of 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 like letting things go and and things that shouldn't have priority do and we just get twisted up until we're set straight something comes along to set us straight so or to keep us straight so anyway there is all that um these are great messages remember unity and the world um here as well all of these cards are just they they feel like they like it feels like a waterfall to me like they all just kind of run into the the next it's like the moon cards with the archangel oracle and then the archangel tarot and then lastly these mermaid cards it just feels like a this waterfall of energy that's really coming through to give us this this understanding that we are being challenged and tested that that energies are heavy and and emotions are like our fuse might be shorter it is like you know the a normal full moon is going to do that for us but a super full moon especially this month with everything that's happened we just have to understand that these energies this full moon this particular full moon is going to carry this wave this like tsunami of energy of change and tests regarding that change but in a good way so don't be frightened or scared use the the ability to tap in with yourself like this the beauty and the divination card is here to balance out these energies of change and so is the world card and the unity card having us connect with our guides and guardians let's not forget metatron talking about prioritizing and working with him to help us prioritize zadkiel is talking about keeping an open mind letting new ideas come in and sometimes we don't know what how to connect all the 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 links in the chain but just to be open to receiving the different links and then knowing at some point we're gonna put that together we're gonna like it's to me it's like you know the trigger's been pulled like i like go time now um and just allowing for yourself to be empowered through your soul through the integration of connecting to your soul and then walking with and through that energy to me i call it suiting up it's like i soul suit up like i'm working from this the energy of my soul through my conscious consciousness through my body through my behavior, through my energy, through my capacity to to process, to 
sort out my negative thoughts from my positive healing thoughts about myself or anybody else and just continue to do that but from this higher vantage point of like soul connection and set aside the human aspect because th- that is like that letting that you know if we if we work from our human aspect it's like letting a two-year-old run the show truly but if we work from the spiritual aspect from the soul aspect that's like letting the wizard run the show i mean there's no comparison there as far as as far as anything goes quite honestly and the more you can tap in to that 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 wizardly you know knowing and seeing and magical and connected and spiritual type of energy then the the better everything is going to be i mean just imagine like the wizard running the show or the two-year-old running the show like what is going to be the better outcome like it might be entertaining for a little bit to let a two-year-old kind of run the show but it's not going to last very long like (laughs) you ever see a two-year-old like try to get shit done like it doesn't (laughs) they're primitive they're they're slow they're clumsy they don't understand or have much of a perspective they're short they're (laughs) oh my god but that's what i'm seeing right now this is my vision it's saying it's like pointing to a little child a little two-year-old child and it has human over it and then and then it has like this wizard like the like the the stereotypical like in purple robes with the floppy hat and like the scepter and like stars all around like wizard like <laughs> and it's like choose which one you want to run your show and that is like the the asleep human is so limited versus the connected spiritual incarnate soul as you awaken and connect and assimilate and transcend and heal and just connect stronger deeper um more consciously to that to your soul to the soul aspect of of who of what you are and what you're meant to be here so much falls away that used to take up so much room number one fear because you can't be coming from a place and operating from a place of your spirit and your soul and be in fear at the same time those two are like unable to work together completely and if they do come into into cross contamination like everything stops like a serious wrench in the the machine because the soul does not work from a fear point of view ever keep that in mind ever ever if you're authentically connected and working through spirit and through your soul you're not going to be working through the mechanism and the program of fear on any level. So that's a really good way to know, like, wh- like to be like, am, you know, should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? Is this right? Is this wrong? Is there a- any fear attached to it? Not trepidation or anxiousness or being a little stressed or uncomfortable, but fear. There's a difference and people sometimes confuse being uncomfortable for different reasons of the unknown for just flat out being in fear. So that also takes discernment in itself. But nevertheless, if you're operating from and out of the 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 mechanisms of your soul and like I the a really good way to see this is like you know first person video games you got your avatar in the video game on your screen and you have the controller in your hands what you're 
directing your avatar to do it instantly does it. And that's exactly the same thing that we're dealing with here. You're the avatar. The world is the stage of the video game. And our soul is holding the controller. And the more that those directives can come down from the higher self consciously consciously that's the key and to know this is soul guidance this is spirit guidance this is supported by my guides and my guardians because this is the guidance that I'm getting to do you'll know You'll just know. And and the more that you do it, it's like more it's like more chips on the table and more hands won. More chips on the table. I'm not a gambler, but I, this is the vision I'm seeing right now just to make my point. The more you win over and over and over again as you step into faith from the soul perspective, the more you're just going to like robotically do and work from that from that um connection. Because you're, you, the fear is gone. You have to sit there and contemplate and think and be confused. And is this right? And isn't this right? And what's coming? And is this me? Is this not me? La, la, la. Like I was telling one of my clients the other day, that bridge between it incoming and you reacting without any kind of in-between thought process gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until it's just like boom, 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 boom. Quick you know, it's like working on a piece of electronics that you're like click and then like three seconds later, it actually like does what you want it to do. You're like, oh my God, what is happening? Like, you ever know what I'm talking about? Like when you ever work on something and you know, like a website or something, it's like really heavy and whatever computer or phone or whatever you're working on is just like, oh boy overloaded too slow and it just takes time to react like a really long time that's what it's like when, we, when we're not connected it and, and it's like maybe it will happen maybe or maybe not maybe it'll just never like you'll click and nothing ever, ever happens on the other side and then there's like times where it's, you use a piece of equipment and it's like you barely click it and boom it's already up and running and doing its thing you're like damn this thing is fast check it out wow <laughs> you know you can't help but notice the process is different there right so that's kind of what it's like too. It's like how quickly you go from incoming to receiving to action, receiving to action, receiving to action, instead of like all this in, in, in between contemplation, fogginess, confusion, stuckness, motivation issues, creativity issues. How do you get it done? Coming up with excuses, being in denial, like, oh my goodness gracious. This is the state of affairs that most people are working from because there's so much fogginess and negative energy that they've packed in from themselves, their experiences, and other people in their lives from the time that they were little, little children. So once that's cleared out or the more that you work to clear that out, the more clear that channel of communication and information and ability to perceive, comprehend and carry out those directives become. That's why my my signature um, program the evolve now program is about cutting out a lot of that fat so you can really connect in a quicker stronger way because we're working on a in a physical spiritual and energetic level to really you know it's like i call it a, an engine overhaul complete overhaul energetically um that that happens there i mean you can get there on your own at your you know whatever pace or you can you know it's just like anything it's like do it yourself work corner by corner in your house remodeling or get calling a whole crew to just like get that shit done in like a week you know what i mean like, it's like a huge difference it's like this might take five years to get through this whole house on weekends and you know <laughs> not going on vacation and working on my house and you know or 
you know, you can get a professional crew to come in and take care of it. It's like kind of the, like that sort of thing. But anyhow, just the intent to get it done, to be guided into ways like people like will just innately know I need somebody to help me to take me through this. And then they'll land at my door and be like, oh, this is exactly what I needed. Or they, you know, have to go around and about a few different ways to get to a point where they're like, oh, this is a thing. Maybe I need help. I'll do it on my own for a while. And then, you know, everybody has their own journey to get to where they need to go. But the point is that we are understanding that that is the thing that we need to do like what's the meaning of life I'll tell you the meaning of life is to connect to your soul and your guides so you can live the life that you're meant to live like I said in the beginning we have it's like getting on a freeway and there's all these different on ramps it's like are you or getting going on a getting into a building like how what floor are you going to go to and it's like every day is about choosing and picking these the, the the steps ahead of us for what what floor we're going to be on what what level we're getting to and if if the understanding consciously is that there's actually energetic roads here otherwise known as timelines that we can work and strive to be on the highest vibrational timeline so what that means is is that we have the less friction the less the less things in our way the less blocks the less um negative energy you know like that's what that means and to nor in order to be on those timelines on those highways energetically we need to resonate at that level so we can be there so that's what each month's like stargates are for to sift us through what we need to dump and recalibrate and heal so we can actually have the highest vibrational frequency going in our body at any given time even if we are assimilating transmuting and healing on deep levels we still we we are ultimately in control of what our vibration is we just need to um, be consciously engaged in in that process so anyhow this has gone on for a while <laughs> <laughs> but these are the messages that have needed to come out. So what I'm going to do now is um, I think we've, you know, dissected this, brought in this energy. I hope that you feel motivated with these with these cards, with these messages. I'm really excited about getting into the meditation. However, I am going to take a little break here. Um, because it has been a while and my metabolism has been really fast. So I'm going to eat before I get into the meditation. So I suggest you do the same. Make sure that if before you get into this meditation that you are hydrated, that you have eaten, that you um, aren't too tired, that you're going to be in the seated position, that this is not a before bed meditation. It's something, it is a full moon meditation, but it's something to do when you have energy and it is going to be a t it is like all the meditations the channeled astral self-healing guided meditations are timeless you can do them at any time so you can do this meditation you know in a week in a month whenever you're guided to they all have some different kind of theme to them so if you work with me i'll say hey if you didn't do that meditation from a month ago go do it it doesn't matter when it was it's just important that you do it so anyhow um thanks again for being here and just sit tight we're gonna get into the meditation or i may even post this as a part two we shall see but um uh, set your space, grab your crystals, turn on candles. Um, feel free to put on some frequency music. I'm going to be using the same music that I had on. It is 1111 Hertz Spiritual Hug of an Angel on the Healing Meditation channel. Um, so, and I'll also try to remember to put the, the link here in the, in the video and in the podcast. So, uh, just one moment here and we will be getting into our meditation. <laughs> <laughs> 